Hello and welcome. Good morning. Who discovered the source of the Nile? Who discovered Victoria Falls? Is it true that uh, David Livingstone discovered Victoria Falls? Is it true that uh, Henry Morton Stanley and uh, Richard Burton discovered the source of the Nile? Where there are no Africans in these particular places. Uh, that is our discussion from today and we have to right the wrongs. And interestingly, is the source of the Nile really at Ginger? Let's, let's handle this. Our educational system has taught us, especially in Uganda, that John Hanning speak and Richard Burton discovered the source of the Nile. And when you go to Victoria Falls, the biggest falls in the world, they also say Dr. David Livingstone uh, discovered Victoria Falls. This poses a question. What is discovery? Where there are no Africans living in these areas before these white men came? The answer is definitely obvious. So is discovery coming to find something existing or exposing it to the international print media? Probably the question would be right if we say who exposed Lake Victoria and Victoria, uh, the source of the Nile, who exposed the source of the Nile and Lake and, uh, and uh, Victoria Falls to the world, probably the answer would be right. But to say John Hanning speak and Richard Burton discovered the source of the Nile, I don't think that is the right version of history to teach our ch children. To say Dr. David Le Livingstone discovered Victoria Falls, that's not the right version. Let's get to the history. In 1855, John Hanning speak and Richard Burton made an attempt to come to Africa to discover the source of the Nile, discover in quotes. In, they failed that attempt. They then failed in uh, Somalia where they were fought by the locals. Peak was actually even injured in the, in the cheek and they went that expedition about it. In 1860, John Hanning Speak and James Grant returned to uh, now Uganda and they said they discovered the source of the Nile at uh, Lake Victoria. And if you go to the source of the Nile in Ginger, you'll find a plug put there that here lies the source of the Nile, the longest river uh, in the world. But the question that has to be put is, did John, John Hanning speak and James Grant discover the source of the Nile? Before they came, the locals had called the Nile Nalobale. Now, there are two questions that have to be disposed here. One, did they discover the source of the Nile? And two, is the source of the Nile a ginger? Now, let's dispose of the first question. Take note that uh, Speak and Grant came slightly at different intervals. Speak came in 1860 and was later joined, uh, that was joined by uh, James Grant. They came, they did their excursions and went back to Europe and said the source of the Nile is at Ginger. John Hanning Speak interestingly even crossed the River Kagera. So when Hanning hurried back to Europe, in 1864 to publish to the Royal Geographic Society that he had discovered the source of the Nile at Ginger, James Grant was not agreeing with Hanning uh, speak. You know, before the dam was, the Owen Falls Dam was constructed at the source of the Nile, there was another falls there called Ripon Falls. Those of you who can uh, archive the, the history, you'll find Ripon Falls. It is the dam that went up and submerge the, the falls. So there is a falls uh, we, 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 within the, the, the source of the Nile. So when John Hanning speak, returned to Europe and they organized a debate, Grant was grotesquing that the source of the Nile was not in, uh, in, in Ginger. Actually, if you go to Ginger, where I went there, what is at Ginger is a reservoir, is a receiver. So for, for it's a receiver. There is nothing akin to the word source. So when they organized the debate in 1864, Speak versus Grant, before the mighty Royal Geographic Society, 
The date was set for the debate 16th September 1864, where Grant was destined to challenge Speak's finding. Speak at that time had already published two books that relate to the source of the Nile. So on the eve of the debate, something very strange happened. Speak was all along not comfortable with the position from Brand. On the eve a day before the debate, on the, the day before the debate, Speak died of a gunshot through the cheek. And uh, it is widely alleged that Speak committed suicide to avoid humiliation that he had published to the whole world that the source of the Nile was at Ginger and Grant was ready to disprove Speak in a public debate on the 16th September 1864. So he committed suicide and the debate aborted and then the debate did not take place. So Speak died at Nelson Park. So the question remains, where is the source of the Nile? Now, there is an interesting Canadian explorer that came to Uganda recently in 1996. He's called Undat J. Christopher. And he, 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 he published to the international media and his, his publication was forwarded by the then the president of the Royal Geographic Society. The same society that Speak and Grant was to go and make presentations before. And he said the source of the Nile is not at Ginger. What is at Ginger is a receiver. It's a big receiver that receives water that is coming from somewhere else. So according to Odatje Christopher, the Canadian, that I believe in, the source of the Nile is from three rivers. River Kagera, the source of the Nile is from River Kagera, which we all know. There are two rivers, again, that feed into River Kagera. River Kagera feeds into the receiver at, uh, at Jinja. So there are two rivers that feed into uh, River Kagera. One in Burundi, River Ruvubu, which comes from Mount Kikizi in Burundi. That River Ruvubu feeds into River Kagera. The second one is River Nyabarongo in Rwanda. River Nyabarongo also feeds into River uh, Kagera. And we know that that river comes from Mount Bigugu in Rwanda. So one river from Burundi, another one from Rwanda feeds into Kagera and then Kagera feeds into Lake Victoria and that is now where the journey of the Nile, recognized journey of the Nile begins. So the version of history given to us in school and given to our children is not the right version. Same with uh, Victoria Falls, same with Victoria Falls. Before David Livingstone went uh, to Victoria Falls, there were locals living there and they had already discovered the source of, 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 of Victoria Falls. The, actually, the locals called it Moshe Otonga, the river that roars in the morning. So, as an Afrocentric scholar, the version, the European version of history that the white man thinks history of Africa be began when they came to Africa must be highly grotesqued and questioned by any right thinking. Uh, individual. This this poses the two questions. Who discovered the source of the night? The locals were there. They called it Nalobale before the whites came. And thank you for watching. Let's check out first. Thank you.